we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Real Local WGSR 47.1 in high definition. Getting sound. Okay, folks, welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you. And we are glad that you are with us. We'll get the sound worked out momentarily, but uh, we are glad you're with us. There's uh, snowing outside, so nothing else you can do but stay inside. And we hope that you're ready to study God's Word with us uh, this evening. We uh, always want to let you know how to get in touch with us if you want to study God's Word with us and assemble with us, or if you would like to have a Bible study, we'd be glad to do that very thing. We meet at 250 the Boulevard there in Eden, North Carolina, 276-340-2653, and wordandlord at gmail.com. And uh, so uh, you can, that's how you can reach me. Of course, uh, we assemble on Sundays at uh, 9 a.m. for Bible study and worship at 10 a.m. And uh, Thursday nights we have a Bible study at 7 p.m. Brother Michael Robertson's been down, and he's been going through the... Uh, the uh, Sermon on the Mount, and uh, it's been a very good study. And so we invite you to come out and, and be with us and, and study God's Word with us as well. 
Uh, if you're in the Martinsville or Danville area, here's their contact information, 823 Starting Avenue, 120 American Legion in Danville. And uh, we want you to go out and be with them and uh, uh, study God's Word with, with the saints in that area if that's closer to you. But you're always welcome any time uh, uh, that you have an opportunity to come out and study with us or watch us on television. We're glad that you will, glad for you to take, that, take advantage of that. I will say this, I want to... Uh, uh, I'll say this, that uh, this, this evening as I was driving up here, I got a call from uh, 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 Roy. Uh, you may recall Roy called in on our TV program uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he was on his way out of, the, out of the Pentecostal church, and he called me, and he told me that he's independent. He's, uh, uh, now he's, out, he's totally out of Pentecostal church. He's in the Lord's church. They obeyed the gospel, and uh, they're worshiping with the saints in Kentucky, and so we're very... Happy to hear that, and uh, I think he's watching online. So, uh, brother, we welcome to the welcome to the kingdom, and welcome to the fight. We're trying to fight for the truth and uh, stand for the truth, and sometimes that is not always uh, pleasant. It's not always enjoyable, but it is uh, something that we must do if we're going to be pleasing to God. So we're great. We're glad to hear that news, and we know that uh, angels are rejoicing in heaven over someone who has obeyed the gospel and freed themselves from the bondage of sin and bondage of, uh, uh, that comes from man's, uh, 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 obeying man's gospel, man's doctrines, and coming to the glorious gospel of Christ. And so we're glad that you have done that very thing. So uh, we want you to be uh, like, like Roy, be honest enough to examine the truth and uh, come out and, uh, and study God's word with us, and we know that we can help you find the truth that God has for you today. I want to start off this evening. I know Mark played some of the video from uh, uh, the uh, headline show. I guess from, this is actually from last week, I suppose. But uh, some of the comments that were made I thought was very interesting and really very good questions uh, that are posed by, uh, by Dick Jensen. He made some comments and he asked a very, very good question. And so I want you to listen to... Uh, uh, this question that, that is asked, and then that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is a question that, that uh, uh, Dick Jansen asked. He doesn't use the term, uh, be on the same page, but it is the idea. Listen to what he says, and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. The audio. Most people will call into Johnny shows, or he'll call in, people will call him when they're on the set, and and, you know, like some of the remarks made about, you know, the Jessicas here and things like, I mean, it's just, I just don't get, not so much an attack, but why the negativeness? I mean, in order for some, in order for two ends to come together and create something more magical, both ends have to be on the same agreement. They both have to have the same idea and the same end game in mind. Right, and if they don't, then it don't work. All right. So there, there's the question. You know, if. If, if we're all going, you know, why be so negative? And, and basically, I think the, 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 the question was, why can't we all get along? And if we're all going to be accomplishing something, we accomplish something uh, greater if we were all together. If we were all on the same page, you're all accomplishing, uh, seeking the same end. And, that, and that's a very good question. Uh, you know, he, he said he said he might get uh, down for that, but uh, no, no, I'm not down at all. Actually, that's the question that we've been asking. Is why is it that we cannot all be on the same page? And the question is why be so negative? The caller that called in uh, on Mark's program was kind of asking that question. You know, if you spent if you wouldn't spend so much time talking about what everybody else is doing, just spend time on the Bible, then you might get somewhere. But here's the thing. Sometimes people don't realize the very thing that's actually keeping us from coming together. And sometimes you have to draw a picture for someone. You know, Jesus, the master teacher, uh, wasn't always able to open the eyes of individuals who were determined that their eyes were going to be shut. And, uh, I mean, he says in Matthew 13, he says, you know, uh, uh, seeing they see not, you know, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And so they, they don't really want to see. And so sometimes you just have to draw a picture to someone to really open their eyes. But why is it that we can't get along? Why is it that we can't be all on the, on the same page? And let's all work together. Let's talk about the religious community 
as a whole. That's really what we're talking about. Uh, and if we can understand this principle, if we can understand this principle, then we will actually be able to understand uh, why it is that there's so much division and disunity in other aspects of life, not just a religious life. And tonight we're going to be talking about, we're primarily going to focus on the religious aspect of it, but Lord willing, next week we'll talk about some other uh, social issues. But the same principle, the same principle is going to uh, uh, be what we use to accomplish this, this unity, this all being on the same page. So why is it? Why is it that we can't all be together and, and be on the same page? Well, here's what we need to realize, friends. Being on the same page, that's, that's the key of getting along. And that's the key of, of having this unity and harmony. But it means that we're all getting along and agreeing about what authority is. All right? In other words, we're agreeing about what the standard's going to be. We're agreeing on the same page as what the rules are going to be. And so sometimes you have to lay out some guidelines. You have to lay out some rules, some principles to say, hey, look, this is the standard that we're going to use. These are the guidelines we're going to use. Now, let's, let's, let's break it down for a minute. Let's kind of bring it down to a level that we all can understand it. As the old preachers used to say, let's, let's try to shell down the corn to the cob. All right, let's, let's get it to where the calves can get it, and then the cows can get it too. So if we can make it very, very simple, then I'm sure that we all can grasp this principle. All right, we can all grasp this principle. You know, the Bible says in Amos 3 and verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, friends, this is the principle that we're talking about. What is it that's going to keep or going to help or make possible for two people to walk together? It is they're going to have to be agreed, but what are they going to be agreed upon? What is it that they're going to agree to? What is it that, that, that's going to bring about this disagreeableness? Well, it has to be that they're agreeing on the same thing that they're going to walk with. In other words, the same rules. Here, here's an example. Can you imagine what it would be like if you had a sports team, let's say an NFL team, and one team is playing by one set of rules and another team is playing by another set of rules? Well, you're, going, you're not going to have any kind of, uh, of, of unity or harmony within the game because everybody's playing with different rules. See that? Or if you have someone saying, well, I, I want to play by, I want, I want the, uh, uh, the, the field to be 100 yards long. And someone says, well, no, no, I, I, I don't like to run that much. I want it to be 50 yards long. Well, you're going to have a problem. Now, you can play football on a 100-yard field or you can play football on a 50-yard field. But the fact is that if you're going to have any unity or harmony within the confines of the game, everybody's going to agree on the rules. Now, you have different, you have different sports leagues. You have the, you have the, the NFL and the, and the CFL, the Canadian Football League. Now, if you put a team from the Canadian Football League on the field with the team from the, the, the National Football League, the NFL. Now, they're going to have some problems playing the game because they're going to be using different rules. You say, well, oh, but it's just football, right? Well, it's not just football because they're playing by two different rules. Now, think about this. Friends, when it comes to religion, sometimes people go, well, we all believe in Jesus. That's like saying, well, we're all playing football. But see, the problem is when somebody says, well, we all believe in Jesus, they're actually using a different set of rules than another person who says, we all believe in Jesus. And so the only way that we're all going to be together is if we can agree, all right, let's work out the differences. Let's, let's, let's come to an agreement on what the rules actually are. Now, here's where we are in religion. The reason why individuals seem to have a hard time with what we're saying 
and why people think that we're being mean or, or cruel or harsh or whatever. We talk about the Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, or whatever. It's because we're actually saying God has already made the rules. God has already set up the rules. And what we're wanting everybody to do is play by the same rules. We're saying, look, here's the rule book. Let's play by the rules. But instead, someone else says, well, I, I want to play the game, but I want to add my own little twists and turns to it. And that's what they do when they add their creed books and catechisms. Now, I think you're getting this, friends. I think you're understanding this. This is the reason why we don't have unity, and this is why individuals like, like uh, uh, Dick Jansen, they get, they're, they're like bum fuzzled about why are all these people in, re in religion, why so crazy? And rightfully so. If there's only one Bible, then we all should be following the same rules. We shouldn't have all the, the division and controversy. But the problem is somebody's not using the rule book. Somebody's not using the rules, and they're trying to play the game uh, according to their own, uh, uh, their own rules. Now, this is what happens when you do that. This is what happens when you do that. This is uh, uh, another statement. There's another statement that was made. And uh, just listen to uh, how religion is described. All right? I look at the Muslim religion, or Muslim religion seems like one of the craziest. Um, I mean, the 72 version concept. Um, you know, where they say people go out and, you know, you, if you kill somebody, do what, we, do what we need you to do, you're going to get magically 72 versions. So why don't the leaders do it? I mean, yeah. you would think that they would be the first ones to start going, right? They, they get everybody else to do I think there's a little bit of lunacy in all religions, yeah. which is why I'm so, and I'll probably get down for this, but yeah. that's why I'm sort of against religion. There's been so much, you don't, you don't have to have a religious background to be a decent person, to know what it takes to help other people out or have good morals. You don't need religion for that. I think I'm a fairly decent person. Mm -hmm. Could use a little improving, but, um, you know, heathen or not, I'm out there. I don't, I don't go out there and commit a bunch of sins, you know what I mean? Like, there's been so much blood spilled over religion, I just, I, I, I don't want to hear about it no more. You know, it's that bad in my mind. And, uh, you know, and I don't think Johnny's going to like this, but we often hear about a, a lot of times people will call into Johnny's shows or he'll call in, and people will call him when they're on the set, and, and you know. Okay, now, we, we've already played that part, and I want to focus on the fact that, you know, he said I, I, there's a little lunacy in all religions. Well, friends, do you stop and think that maybe the reason why people look at all religions as being loony is because no one is agreeing on the rules? No one's agreeing on the standard of authority? No one is saying, hey, let's, let's find out what the rules are and let's all play by the same rules. All right? So if you really want agreement, you really want harmony, you really want uh, uh, so, so, some, some unity amongst all the individuals and you want people to say you look, look how unified we are that's what God wants by the way that's what Jesus prayed for if you'll notice in John chapter 17 John 17 and we're going to look at verse uh, 20 Jesus says neither pray I for these alone uh but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, uh, 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 they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they all may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, look at that. Jesus is praying for unity, and he's praying that we all be one, Based upon the word, he said, I'm praying for the word, praying for them that believe in me through their word, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, why is it that people don't believe in Christ? It's because there is no unity. They have a tough time believing that this is what religion is supposed to be when everybody claims to believe something and they're all being different. Now, think about that. People claim, well, we we're, we're all believe in Jesus. We all believe in Jesus, okay. Then why is it that you're in such disagreement? Why is it that you're in such disarray? That's like someone saying, well, I, I, I play in football, but we're playing by different rules. 
Well, that's a chaotic game. That's a crazy game. So let's look at what it takes. See, if we're going to be in agreement and we're all going to be on the same page, then, friends, it comes down to understanding authority. It comes down to understanding why you get to do certain things and why you can't do certain things. All right, now Matthew 21, verse 23 is where we're going to look. We're going to start right here. Matthew 21 and verse 23. All right, Matthew 21, 23. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders uh, of the people came unto him. Now notice the question. They came unto him as he was teaching, and here's what they said. By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Now, were the Jews, were the, were the religious leaders, were the Pharisees and scribes and religious leaders, were they on the same page as Jesus? No, they weren't. They weren't on the same page as Jesus. They were actually at odds with each other. Why? Why? Because they were getting their authority from two different sources. See, they were getting their authority, their marching orders from two different uh, sources, you, you might say. Notice this. And so Jesus answered them and said, I also will ask you one thing. All right, they asked him a question. He said, I'm going to ask you one thing. Which if you tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. All right? Well, what's the question, Jesus? What's the question? He says, the baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they answered, they reasoned with, notice, they reasoned with themselves saying, so they're thinking about it. They said, if we say it was from heaven, he will say, why did you not obey it? And if you said, if it was from John, then he says, why do you believe him? Or, 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 from, or from heaven, uh, then why do you not believe him? But if we say it's of men, we fear the people, for they hold uh, John a prophet. So they said, we cannot tell. Now, they're asking Jesus a question about authority. Because they're getting their marching orders from where? They're getting their marching orders from the traditions of, from the traditions that they have actually added to the law of Moses. Notice this. Jesus says in Matthew 15, and uh, uh, let's say Matthew 15 in verse uh, 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 2. Matthew 15, verse 2. Here's the scribes and Pharisees. They come to Jesus, and they say, Why are you the disciples uh, transgress the tradition of the elders? See where their authority is? Their authority is coming from the traditions of men, and they said, you're transgressing it by not washing hands. Can you see how they're both appealing to authority, but one is appealing to the authority of man, their traditions, and the other, Jesus is appealing to the authority of the law of, of God. He said unto them, then why do you transgress the commandment of God with your traditions? See, there is no, no, uh, no harmony, there's no unity when individuals use different sources of authority for why they do what they do. So, the conclusion you come to is the reason why the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes were not in agreement with Jesus was because they were getting their authority from two different places. That has to be it. Now, let's look at today. Why is it that the Baptist, Methodist, Catholics, Lutheran, Pentecostals, and so forth, why is it they don't all get along with each other? Why is it that, that we are all at odds with one another when it comes down to doing what God says? Can it not be? Is it not the case? Surely you can see that the reason why we are all different is because we're all appealing to different sources of authority. Now you might say, well, James, I use the Bible. I use the Bible. My preacher preaches right from the Bible. Okay. 
Okay, you know what the Pharisees could say? The Pharisees could say, well, you know what? We, re we go right to the law of Moses. The only difference was they added the tradition of their fathers to it. And that changes it. And when you start adding something to the rule book, when you start adding something to the, to the Word of God, you change the source of authority. You change the authority. You change the rules. So it's not the same. And friends, you will never get the same product. You'll never get the harmony and the unity that you desire because we're not appealing to the same product. See? So we're talking about using the same standard, the same, the same source of authority. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to accomplish. <clears throat> now, let me show you. Let me show you. This is what we're talking about. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, all right, and verse 1. Now, everybody knows this verse. Judge not that ye be not judged. Now, friends, I want to show you how not understanding authority causes division. In this verse, judge not that ye be not judged, is judging being condemned here because I would say 99 times out of 100, if not 100 times out of 100, maybe even 110 times out of 100, when people call in and want to say that we're doing something wrong, they'll use this verse and say, oh, don't judge. Judge not, you be not judged. Now, is this verse condemning judging? Is it really condemning judging? Now, if you look at that one verse, you say, oh, yeah, that, that's exactly, it says judge not. Judge not that you be not judged. But notice the context. The context does not say don't judge. The context is actually a warning about how to judge. The context is giving a warning about what happens if you judge incorrectly by a different standard. Look at this. He says, judge not that you be not judged. Verse 2, for with what judgment ye judge, Ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured again unto you. All right? So the, the warning is not don't judge. The warning is if you do judge, you need to be careful if you judge because that's going to be the standard that's applied back to you. Then notice in verse 3, he comes on and says, he says, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye and con considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? All right? He says, here you are, you're looking at someone else, but you're not seeing what's in your own eye. And here's verse 4. He says, or how wilt thou see, uh, how, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the, a beam is in thine own eye. Verse 5. Verse 5, he says, Thou hypocrite. See, he's not saying don't judge. He's saying don't judge by a standard that you yourself will not be held to. Don't say someone is doing something wrong by a certain standard and then you yourself will not be held to it. See, what he's condemning here is hypocrisy. He says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thine own eye, then thou shalt see to remove, to clearly cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. See, what's being condemned in Matthew 7 is not judging. It's actually the hypocrisy or hypocritical judging that you yourself will not hold to. Now, friends, that's one we say all the time. People call in, Call to us and they say, well, you're judging people. You shouldn't be talking about that. You're condemning people. Yada, yada, yada. And then the first thing we say to them is, aren't you doing the very thing that you say we should not be doing? And you know what I often get? Oh, I'm not judging. I'm just pointing out you're wrong. Yeah, okay. Tomato, tomato. You know, you, you can call it what you want to. That's what it is. And so you can't, you can't say, well, it's wrong for you to do that. Oh, no. What's wrong is to say, I'm going to hold you to the standard of God's word, and then you yourself won't be held to it. 
And that's where, that's where the unity breaks down. But see, friends, if everybody's held to this standard, if everybody's held up to, to this book and says, you know what, we're going to all make sure that we're walking by the same rule and we're all minding the same thing, then we're going to have unity. And even if we mess up, if somebody goes astray, it won't be a problem for someone to say, hey, brother, you're stepping out of line here. Let's come back in. And it won't be a problem for someone to say to me, hey, James, you're out of line here. Come back in. See, we don't have a problem with someone telling us, hey, is this, is this, is this right? You're doing something wrong if you just show us the Bible. But see, the problem that we have, friends, is oftentimes people don't want to use the Bible. They don't want to use the Bible. Oftentimes what they want to do is they want to use a different source for their authority, and that will never bring unity. That will never bring unity. See, Christ is not saying don't judge. He's actually saying make sure that what you judge is righteous. John 7 uh, and verse 24, John 7, 24, look what he says. He says, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now how are we going to judge righteous judgment? It must mean that we use a righteous standard. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered or are you ever stopped thinking about when you're getting gas? How do you know? I mean, gas is high. Have you ever stopped thinking that, you know what, this guy may be cheating me. I may be able to fill up my tank. I'm not really paying attention to uh, how much gas I'm getting. I just know I'm going to fill up my tank. You get 10, 10 gallons of gas. Have you really got 10 gallons of gas? How do you know that the gallon you're putting in your tank is really a gallon? How do you really know there's 128 ounces there? How do you know that when that, that pump says one gallon has pumped through the meter, that you've actually gotten all of the fuel that you paid for? You know how you know? You have to have confidence that we're all using the same standard. They were all using the same standard. Now, friends, when it comes to the Bible, the Bible is that righteous standard by which we can make righteous judgment. So if we want to, if, if we want to make sure that we're judging righteous judgment, we have to use a righteous standard. All right? So what is that righteous standard? What is that righteous standard? In uh, uh, Hebrews, let's look at Hebrews 5 and verse 13, I believe it is. The Hebrew writer says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Look at that. He's talking about the Bible. God's word, the word of righteousness. Now, if we're going to judge righteous judgment, we have to be using a righteous standard. Now, if everybody gets their own set of beliefs, everybody gets to have their own, well, this is what I think, I feel, I believe, I imagine, that's not really a righteous standard, is it? That's kind of like saying, well, I think a foot ought to be this long. Well, how long is that? I don't know. It just looks pretty good to me. Let me tell you, if I go to Subway and I get a foot long, I'd like to have a foot long about that long. But now, someone else said, no, I, th I think a foot ought to be that long. So I said, well, no, well let's, call, we'll call this a foot. Wait a minute, we need a, we need a standardized rule of measurement. We need something that everybody agrees to. And we'll all be happy. We'll all be happy. See? So if you're going to judge righteous judgment, it's going to have to be because you're using the righteous standard of God's Word. 
So judging's not wrong if you're using the right the, the righteous standard. Okay? Now, let's look again. Let's look let's look back at our Bible. In Acts chapter four, in Acts chapter four and verse one. Listen to what the Bible says. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple, uh, and the Sadducees, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees camp on them. Talking about Peter and John. Being grieved. Now let's stop there. Being grieved. What was it? What was it that was causing them some grief? What was the source of this strife, this contention, this discord, this disagreement? What was the, what was the cause of this grief? Now think about that. Well, no, no they, all, they all worship God. They all, they all love God. You just ask them. If you ask a Pharisee, do you love God? Oh, yes, I do. I, I love Jehovah God. Yes, he, God Almighty. I, I love him. If you ask the Pharisee, Sadducee, do you love God? Oh, yeah. And you ask the Christian, do you love God? Oh, yeah. But then why is it that you're all upset at each other? Why is it you're grieved about what's being taught? Well, the problem must be the source of authority. The problem must be is the standard that you're using as to why you're doing what you're doing, where you're getting your marching orders. And that's exactly what the problem was. Look at this. In Acts 4 and verse 2, they, they came together, they were grieved. Why? That they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They were, they were upset. And so what did they do? What did they do? In verse 7, notice this. Verse 7, they came, they, they got Peter and John on the mall. They, they, they drug them out. And here's what they said. They said, by what power or by what name have ye done this? By what power or by what name have you done this? By whose authority? Now, friends, I'm, I'm trying to say it as plain as I know how. The reason why there's so much lunacy in religion and the reason why there's so much contention and the reason why we are seeming to be so negative as, as Dick Jansen said about other religions is because they're not using the authority, the standard of authority that they claim to be using. Now this is the, the source of grief that you had with, with these guys was they were using Jesus as their authority. But the religious leaders, like when Christ was on earth, they were using another set of tradition, or another set of, 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 of rules, another guideline, another standard. Brother, that's always going to be a problem. Friends, that's always going to be the, the, the reason why there's contention is because we're not using the same set of rules. Why do you think the Muslims don't like the Jews? Why do you think the Jews don't like the Muslims? Why do you think the Muslims don't like Christians? because they're using different rules. And that makes other people who are not part of any of those religions look at them and say, well, they're all crazy. Why do you think Muslims don't like Buddhists? Why, why do you think they're all, they're all against each other? Why can't we all just get along? You know why? It's because they're all using a different standard. They're all using a different set of rules. They're not walking by the same rule Therefore, they're not in agreement. And therefore, they can't walk together because they're not all on the same page. Now, friends, what we're trying to get people to do is realize we can be on the same page. We need to be on the same page. We must be on the same page if we're going to have unity. If we're going to have the peace and harmony and unity that we, that, that we know Christ wants, 
It means we're all going to have to be walking by the same standard. And so the apostles were using the apostles were using the standard of Christ. Christ is our authority. Well, the Pharisees didn't like that. The Jewish leaders didn't like that. You may recall there was a man named Saul of Tarsus who certainly didn't like it. He was trying to kill everybody. Anybody that called upon the name of Jesus or did anything by the authority of Christ, he said, I'm going to kill them. Now, what would make him do that? Why would he be so upset? Because they weren't using the same standard that he was using. Now, later on, he's going to realize, hey, I'm following the wrong standard. Acts chapter 9, he realizes, hey, I'm, I'm actually persecuting the true standard. The one who's given the rules that we all should live by. So I submit to you that the reason why we're not on the same page when it comes to the Bible is because we must be using a different standard, a different set of rules, a different source of authority. Now, I hear people say all the time, well, you know, we're, we all believe in Christ, therefore we're, we're all fine, just as long as you believe in Jesus. As long as you believe the Bible. I, I want you to listen to this, this caller. Actually, it's a couple callers. And I want you to ask the question. I want you to ask yourself this question. Are we really on the same page when it comes to the Bible? Are, are we really on the same page when it comes to the Bible? Is it, well, I, I use the King James Bible. That's what I use. But are we on the same page? Listen to what this caller says. Or a couple of calls, I think. You on the work, my Lord? Uh, yes. I just recently started watching your program, but I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, number one, the baptism. Uh-huh. I don't, uh, I think that if I were to get saved today and I got killed or I died, if I get saved okay. and then I get killed or I die or whatever, before I get to get baptized, because you don't get baptized the same day you're saved. How do you, now, what, now, can you give me a verse for that? A verse? Can you give me a Bible verse where, or an example in the Bible where someone was saved? I'm asking a I'm sorry? I'm asking a question. Okay. If I get saved today, and tomorrow I get run over by a truck or whatever, I die, and I haven't gotten to get baptized, am I still going to heaven? You want to work in the Lord? I want to say to the lady that called in just a few seconds ago, she was puzzled about getting saved. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, is that all she has to do is believe? Accept Him into her heart. Now, where does it say, accept Him into your heart? In now, uh, listen, uh, James. Now, ma'am. Um, no, no, listen, you listen to me. You, I asked you a question. You made a statement. I am quoting what God says okay. in the Bible. Now, ma'am, I'm going to quote you what God says, too. Go ahead. God says, repent. Now, where is repent in John 3.16? Can you hear that? Where's repent in John 3.16? See, it's not in there. But these people, they say, well, here's, here's what you've got to do. Here's the standard for salvation. God so loved the world that gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, period. Is that the all that there is to do to be saved? Is that the, the total... Uh, 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 all the, of total of all the verses about what mu someone must do to be saved? Is that all the Bible has to say about salvation? See, friends, if we're going to use, if we're going to use the same standard, then what that means is if we hear what the Bible says here, then we're also going to have to accept what the Bible says over here. And I'm going to play you another video. Uh, someone is not going to accept that. See? And so if you, if you have someone that says, well, I'm going to listen to what the Bible says here, but I'm not going to listen to what the Bible says here, 
there's going to be a problem. There's not going to be unity. Now, I'd like to spend the time and answer those, those calls that we just, we just talked about. But I'm planning for a purpose. Here's someone who says, so lady, first lady calls in and says, if I got saved and then I had a wreck before I was baptized, am I lost? Well, she missed the point. The standard, the Bible, does not say you get saved and then you're baptized. So her very question was, 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 was wrong. It was, it was a fallacy. You don't get saved and then be baptized. And then the lady called in to help her and said, Hey, you just believe on Jesus. Now, is, is that really walking together? Are we really on the same page? Let me ask you, why is it that there is no common ground? Is it because we can't get along? Because we can't find the common ground? We can't, find the, we can't find the same page to be on? Or is it some other reason? Here's another call. You got a word from the Lord? Uh, yes, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. That is when you're saved. Is, After is it, you become saved, then you confess your sins, then hmm. you show by being baptized in water. Now, now, can I ask you a question? Yes. All right, John 3, 16. All right, you, you quoted that. Now, where was the verse, or where did it say in there that you had to repent? Do you have to repent? Sure, you can't be saved unless you repent. Now, well, you said John three sixteen was 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 the salvation. When you believe, you're saved. Well, yeah, you when you believe and you repent. Now what? Now while ago you just now John three sixteen doesn't say repent. Well, you, you can't believe unless you repent. Oh really? Yes, you got to repent. My Bible. So you're saying repent comes before belief? No, you can believe in God but you may not have accepted him as your personal Savior until you ask him to forgive you of your sins. So, but you and said... you ask him to forgive you your sins. You said you can't, you can't believe until you repent. You can believe in God and Jesus, but you don't have to be a Christian to believe. People believe and believe there's a God and believe there's okay. Jesus, but you okay. don't have to repent to believe. But, but John 3.16 does not have repent or confess in it. But you just admitted that you have to do both of those things in order That's to be saved. Right, you do. You have to be saved. So if why is it... Believe, why is, when you believe, then you confess your sin and you accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Now... Just because you believe... But, but here's my question, though. Why would you then quote John 3.16 to me and say, That's what you must do to be saved, knowing that you also have to repent and you have to confess. You know, you can turn the Scripture around. I'm not turning the Scripture around. I'm not, ma'am, I'm not turning the Scripture you are. You, No, I'm you not. I'm asking you, ma'am. Now, now, ma'am. You're deceiving people. I'm not deceiving. You should not be on TV. Ma'am. Now, why do you, now, wait. Why do you, why do you get angry like that? I'm not what, angry. No, you're, you're ma'am, 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 I'm not deceiving people. You're the one deceiving people, quoting John 3.16, and telling them that's all you have to do to be saved. Oh, but by the way, you have to repent and confess too, and it's not in that verse. Now, friends, here, here, here's what I'm trying to get you to see. Le uh, people like this lady that called in are demonstrating that they have a problem accepting the whole standard. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm saying, are they dishonest? Or are they ignorant? Do they just not realize that they're not accepting the whole standard? Either way, it's what brings about the disunity. Either way, it's what brings about the chaos, the lunacy, you know? That, that people see when they say, well, Christianity, all religions, they're just crazy. It's because of this. People say, well, the Bible says John 3.16, you've got to repent. Well, John 3.16 doesn't say repent. The word repent is not even in the, in the book of John. And yet people say, well, that's what you've got to do. Well, then it means you must have to go somewhere else to get that out of the Bible. See that? You have to go somewhere else because if the Bible is the authority, that everybody claims that it is, that they want, 
then you have to have consistency in accepting what the Bible says. That is what is authorized. You can't say, well, this is okay by the Bible, but I'm not going to accept what the Bible says over here. Are you, are you following me? In other words, if the Bible is the standard that you claim to follow, to be honest, you have to accept everything the Bible says. If we're talking about matters of salvation, you can't say, I believe the Bible says this on salvation, but I reject that the Bible says this on salvation. You can't do that. You can't, not, not and be honest. So not and be honest. Here's what happens. When people say, when people say, well, I'm, I'm accepting the Bible, that means you have to accept all of it. And if we can't find, if we can't agree that the Bible is a standard and we're going to accept whatever it says, on certain matters, then we're not going to have the unity that God wants. We're not going to have the harmony that the world needs to see in order to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay? Now, here's this next caller. It's a good illustration. If you'll notice, friends, all these callers are talking about John 3.16. All of them are talking about John 3.16. Talking about the scripture just a moment ago, for God so loved the world. Right. That whosoever believeth in him shall have an everlasting life. Right. And uh, you were uh, refuting that. So we're going to believe what Paul said, not what John says. How about we believe what both of them said? That's what I'm doing. I, I, but I believe exactly what the word said, for God so loved the world. Okay. That he gave his only begotten son. All right. We're going to stop there and t take this, take a phone call. We'll come back to that. Let's call it. You want a word from the Lord? Yes. When those people had called, uh, in the Bible it says God is not the author of confusion. Those people were confused, I think. Did you explain to them how... To get saved. Well, I don't. I don't remember some of those calls, but I, I'm. I know the first. Uh, the first lady that called in, uh, I cut that call off. I'm pretty sure that we carried on that conversation to some degree. I was trying to demonstrate that, you know, if you ask somebody what to do to be saved, they're only going to tell you a little bit of what the Bible says. They're not going to give you the whole, uh, the whole counsel of God, as Paul said. And so what I'm demonstrating is people are not going to be honest when it comes to accepting the Bible. They'll say they accept the Bible, but when it gets right down to it, if you tell them something else that they, that they don't want to hear, they're really rejecting the whole Bible. Because watch this. No. Oh, when I talk about, when we say John 3.16... And they say, that's what you must do to be saved. If I bring up then, well, you have to also repent, and that's not in John 3.16, and you also have to confess Christ with your mouth. That's not in John 3.16. And you also have to be baptized for the remission of sins. That's not in John 3.16. Now, you know what they're going to do? They're going to accept John 3.16 and reject the other things that they don't particularly like. Now, are they really accepting the Bible when they reject what the Bible says? Caller? Well, 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 I asked that for is I didn't hear you explain that to them. Well, I didn't, I didn't in those calls. I, I didn't play that because I was trying to make a point. I'm trying to show you that this is what they would say. They're saying they want part of the, they want part of the standard. They want part of the uh, the rule book, but when I show this second lady, when I show the second lady, she demonstrates that she really doesn't want what the rest of the Bible says. She only wants to take John. She doesn't want to take what Paul says. Okay? Well, what I mean is you could give her the scripture 
the truth to them that it's in the Bible. Right. I, and and I'm sure I did in those calls, but like I said, I just didn't play that for you to hear. I was trying to make a point. So, oh. but I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. give I'm gonna give people the uh, uh, the whole of what they need to do to be saved before we get off the air tonight. If if I have time, I, I'm I'm running pretty short on time right now. So, uh, okay. But I w- but I will do that. I appreciate your call. All right. All right. All right. So so here's so let's let's finish listening to this caller. I don't need to add or take away. Okay. That's what the scriptures say, and I don't need to analyze it. So I believe that. Thank you for talking. Oh, I, well, wait a minute. Can we, can we have a conversation? Sure. So, so I, I guess I don't understand your point. John said, He that believeth, right? Gospel of the world, they gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on him. Should have everlasting life. So what? What was it about Paul? I missed that part. You uh, often quote what Paul says and believe in that, but seem like you're refuting what John says. No, I'm I'm saying that if you believe what John says, then you're also going to believe what Paul says. But do you believe? Well, let's go this way. Reverse this thing. Do you believe exactly what John just says? What God says? I, I do. World? I do. So that, but, in, that ends the point of whether no, you have to be baptized. No, it first. doesn't. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked the lady that uh, on the on the on the clip that we played. Do you believe that you have to repent? I believe exactly what John three sixteen says. For God so okay, loved the world, but, I don't need to add or take away from that word. Okay, but let me ask so you this. That's, that's no, my no, but, yes, but, it is my answer. Okay, I know it's your answer, but let me ask <laughs> that's you this. what I believe. But John, but do you believe that you have to repent? I believe exactly what John said. So, well, John never said repent. So, my question to you is, do you believe that you have to repent? I believe repent? exactly what John said. I won't so, you're not going to answer the question. I, no, I you, won't take away and I won't add no. to. Well, you're not taking away or adding to. I'm not going to. It, 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 it refutes that. I believe are you, exactly. Are you going to be intellectually dishonest here? Do you believe that a person has to repent in order to be saved? Did I not answer your question? I believe what John said. Thank you for talking what? with me. Okay. All right. See, friend, I just, you know, this is very intellectually dishonest. I believe what John says. Well, John never said anything about repent. So if you're not going to be baptized because John didn't say it in John 3.16, then you're not going to be repent because John never said repent. So we're going to believe what Paul said, not what John says? How about we believe what both of them said? That's what I'm doing. Are you going to be intellectually dishonest here? Do you believe that a person has to repent in order to be saved? Did I not answer your question? I believe what John said. Thank you for talking what? with me. How about we believe what both of them said? That's what I'm doing. I believe what John said. Thank you for talking what? with me. Okay, friends. This, this, is, this is my point. We're showing that individuals are intellectually dishonest. She would not accept that there was something else in the Bible you must do to be saved. She only wanted what John said. Friends, you cannot just take part of the Bible and then say, I'm taking the whole Bible. You have to take it all. And Paul said he became, he was an example, uh, a pattern to them which should believe, and Paul was baptized for the mission of sins. Acts 22, verse 16. He was told, Why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Friends, that's what we're trying to do. Give you the whole counsel of God so that we can all walk together. I didn't have time to get through the rest of my slides to give you the information that the lady wanted. But friends, if you want to hear the gospel, we'll be glad to help you. We're out of time. We want to say stay tuned next week. We'll come back. We'll continue this and talk about some other things that are essential to uh, 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 unity uh, next week on A Word from the Lord. We hope that you'll uh, tune in for that. Until next time, hope you have a good night. And you've been seeing that there's a winter storm watch or an advisory in effect. Well, throw that out the window uh, completely. Uh, now we're under a winter storm warning. That was supposed to start at around 6 o'clock. Well, guess what? Uh, they moved it ahead an hour. And so now we're under a winter storm warning. And it looks like that we will see some snow, some sleet and freezing rain across the area and that's because the system is making its way here. Take a look at the pink area. That's us. And that's where the warning is now 
in effect, and that's until noon on Friday. Now, locations impacted include Southside, Virginia, the north central 